One of the mysteries is, in this post-9-11 world, in which this plane may have been taken down, why wouldn't the passengers have fought? Why, why would they have allowed, somebody might have realized at some point it was making weird turns. They were well past the number of hours it would have taken them to get to Beijing by the time we believe the plane went down. So what, what happened to the passengers? What do you think? It's, no one really knows, but it's because of the amount of time that transpired, it's likely that they were incapacitated in one way or another very early in the event. Right. So after right after the first left turn, uh, the turning away from Beijing, we know the airplane climbed to uh, 40,000 feet. It had been at 35,000 feet. 40,000 feet was the pretty much the ceiling of the airplane performance ceiling at that time, that weight that night. So they climbed as high as they could go. And it's, it's I think there would be general agreement well, I, there's, there's a lot of disagreement here because people have all kinds of crazy theories, but reasonable people think that the the passengers were incapacitated and actually probably killed by depressurizing the airplane. Very easy to do. You depressure, you throw a switch, you depressurize the cabin. Um, the people basically go to sleep. And, uh, you, you know, it, masks fall, but they put them on, but they're no good at that altitude. I mean, those are masks are good only for riding a short descent down to higher pressures in the lower altitudes. At 40,000 feet, the mask is really not going to do you a normal mask. But in the cockpit, there are four uh, pressure masks, which are different, right? They pressurize the oxygen flow to the lungs. So you have a sort of a mini pressurized airplane if you put that mask on. They're quick, quick donning masks. So you slap those on depressurize the airplane, everybody in the back dies within minutes. A peaceful death, not screaming. How? How, how would it be Nothing. a peaceful death? Well, because the people go to it's extreme hypoxia. People go to sleep. They don't, they don't, they're not gasping for breath. Really? They, they don't feel that they're suffocating. Yeah, hypoxia. So okay. um, it, it seems, I think many people would agree that the the airplane was depressurized at roughly the same time that the entire electrical system was shut down, which is an, another matter. That w um, and this is all very closely associated with the first left turn away from Beijing and a short, a tight turn, high G load turn, and a climb to forty thousand feet. So, if I you mean, were going to depressurize the, the aircraft with a switch, why would you need to go up to forty thousand feet? You don't. So, you know, that's like overkill, but it makes it happen faster. So, yeah, and you also don't need to make a tight turn. We know that that initial turn away from Beijing was not flown on autopilot. It was too tight for an autopilot. It was flown by hand. And it was somebody was flying that airplane that made that turn. It was a tight turn, steep, steep mm -hmm. bank angle, high bank angle, high G load. Why, why would that be the choice? I don't know. Mm, okay. I don't know. That doesn't, I mean, doesn't tell you anything. It, not entirely rational, obviously. So then we go out over the Indian Ocean and we go south. For how many hours was it over the Indian Ocean? Well, the whole flight lasted, what, seven hours, or six hours, I think probably five hours over the Indian Ocean, something like that. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to guess about. I have to go back and look at my notes and all that. That's been a long time for me, but, but yeah, several say hours, five hours, several hours, actually over the Indian Ocean. That's and a long time, said, by the way. Right. So, is there anything to be gleaned from that? No. Uh, I mean, why would if if a guy is suicidal and intent on killing himself and all his passengers, why would he wait so long to do it? That's totally unknown. I have a theory, which is nothing, nothing at all solid, is, is, is that the, if indeed the captain did this, and I think he did, okay, why waltz around this, uh, his name is Zahari, he may have, he, um, having committed to this flight path that he presumably actually had thought through in advance and practiced on a flight simulator, um, that he that he found himself in a quandary 
that he actually um, knew he couldn't turn back. For one thing, he probably killed the entire plane load of passengers. And also he just deviated, you know, from the course to Beijing, that he couldn't go back home ever again. It, he knew that he had to die. That, But, but um, he didn't want to die, maybe. Or he was savoring the last moments of his life. I don't know. It, it's, it's always struck me is that that long flight, the length of that flight, after he made that last turn out over the Indian Ocean and then flew pretty much straight for five hours, let's say, um, that he was in a some kind of a, an emotional or philosophical um, quandary. I, I want to, I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to. And it just went on until he ran out of gas. He couldn't quite bring himself to do it. And finally, he let it do it to him. But I, I don't know that. And I think I know that nobody knows that. That that's why would he take five hours? Why not just do what every other suicidal pilot does? And there are quite a few have been around. You know, this is a fairly stand, not standard, but an occasional occurrence. Um, you push the airplane into the ground right away, within minutes. You don't wait around. So he waited around for five hours. So I, I cannot explain that. Mm, it's incredibly eerie to think about that man up there potentially flying that aircraft with dead bodies filling up the cabin, dead at his hand. Did you know that there is one phase of sleep that almost everyone fails to get enough of? And this one phase of sleep is responsible for most of your body's daily rejuvenation, repair, controlling hunger, and weight loss hormones, and boosting energy? I'm talking about deep sleep. Why don't most people get enough of this one most important phase of sleep? A big reason is magnesium deficiency. And over 80% of the population is deficient in magnesium. Now, before you go out and just buy any magnesium supplement, it is important to understand that most products out there only have one to two forms of magnesium, when the reality is your body needs all seven forms of this essential sleep mineral. That's where Magnesium Breakthrough comes in. Magnesium Breakthrough contains all seven forms of magnesium designed to help calm your mind and help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. Visit magbreakthrough.com slash Megan Kelly to order now. In addition to the discount you get by using promo code Megan10, there are always amazing gifts with purchase. You're going to love shopping at Buy Optimizers. Go now to magbreakthrough.com slash Megan Kelly to get your magnesium breakthrough and find out this month's gift with purchase. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.